I'm Dave Danasso. And I'm Jeremy Talby. Today we are super excited to bring you this episode. We are hiking the sand prairies of the Midwest in search of one of the most dramatic snake species in the entire world. This is not going to be easy. It's 85 degrees out, we're sweating. I feel like a buffet table to the mosquitoes, the gnats. There's burrs all over us, but you know what? We are definitely up for the challenge and we are not going to disappoint. So get ready, because we're going to bring some nature in your face. Bep. Nature in your face! Animals have many different ways of defending themselves. You mean like all ninja? <laughs> Not quite, but some do bite. Hey! Stop! Yeah, and I hear some of them like to run away like little babies. <laughs> My favorite, when they play possum. Hey! And I didn't mean to scare you. Today, we have an animal that'll go through a combination of these to keep predators away from them. Well, what are we waiting for? Follow me. Let's go. So Jeremy and I knew if we were going to find our hognose snake, it would have to be here in the sand prairie. This habitat is ideal, not only for this particular snake, but it also supports a number of plants and animals that could not survive anywhere else, including this species of cacti that reminded us we didn't have to be in the desert to enjoy having to pull cactus needles out of our butt. We even came across the secret of western glass lizard, a type of legless lizard that most people would confuse for a snake. So somehow the hognose still managed to elude us, but that didn't prevent us from finding other snakes that would also use a specialized means of defense to intimidate a would-be predator. Listen to how this blue racer rubs its scales together to produce an annoying high-pitched sound very similar to nails on a chalkboard. And although it's not venomous, it will also vibrate its tail much the same way as a rattlesnake. If all else fails, perhaps a bite to the face will do the trick. Okay, so those are some pretty impressive threat displays. But if we had to give out an award for the most intimidating snake in the sand prairie, I think you'd agree it would have to go to the bull snake. With its mouth agape, lip curled inward, and an ability to emit one of the loudest audible hisses of any reptile, it's not surprising that once it reaches an adult size of six to eight feet, there's not many predators that are gonna mess with it. Unlike a potential predator, we knew the bull snake's threats were only an act, and we had no problem handling this gentle giant. It wasn't our target species, but it certainly was an exciting encounter. Now they're not, whoa, <laughs> armpit shoot bite, right armpit up, bite. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> no yeah. hugging me. All right, so where there's sand, there's hog nose. And right here is the sand that makes up the sand prairie. Makes complete sense. Now, if I put my hand on this, it is really warm from sitting in that sun. It's a perfect place when that sun goes down. The snakes can come up here, they can bash, they can thermoregulate, so just control their body heat. They can also burrow down into here, lay eggs. Perfect medium for these guys, and that's why we're here. Well, the sun was hot, and the environment is just right, and our snake senses were beginning to tingle. We knew it was only a matter of time before we would find the hog nose. Here, piggy, piggy. Stop, 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 snake. Where? Oh, oh no, I see right it. Here, right here, right here. Go get it. I got him. Ooh, there we go. There There's he that is. first sequence we were talking about where he cobras. Whoa, he just musked at you in 3D. Did you see that? Oh yeah, let me get the bottom shot. I want to yeah. see this flaring out. Oh yeah. See, there's a sequence of events that happened. The first thing that happened is the snake saw us, tried to escape. Second thing, he spreads that cobra hood. Third thing, he musks. Now if we mess with him any further, this thing's gonna play dead. All right, we got our hog nose. Should we show these guys how this thing plays dead now? Yeah, I think we need to get him somewhere and uh, right. get some better footage of this guy. Talk about him. Immediately after placing the snake back on the ground, it flipped over and began to writhe and squirm as if it were mortally injured. Eventually, all movement would cease and the snake would become completely lifeless.
All right, guys, we got our hog nose now. You saw us catch it. He was crazy, flailing, all right, doing this little cobra. Now, check it out. He's just laying here on his back. Now, speaking of defense mechanisms, you probably think scratching, clawing, biting, stinging, but what about playing possum? Dave, what do you think about this guy? <laughs> what? This is probably the most elaborate threat display of any snake on the planet. I mean, look at him. He is as limp as a dead animal. And that is intentional. We didn't hurt him, we didn't harm him. Whoa, wait a minute, Jeremy. He might just be coming to life now. Is he waking up? He's waking up, I think. Let's get the paddles. No, wait, now watch this. He may, he may just roll over. If we kind of mess oh. with him, look at that. <laughs> there oh, he goes. He died again. He's dead twice. Now, you so think cats dead. have nine lives? This guy has as many lives as he wants. Look at so this. So dead right now. I look, know, his man. tongue's out. Yep. And you know what? In the next couple minutes, we're going to show you how this snake actually will spring back to life. Now, the trick is walk away from the snake. As long as he knows we're sitting here with him, he's going to pretend he's dead. And that's exactly what he wants. A lot of predators will walk away from an animal they believe to be dead. How cool is that? Very cool, very cool. All right, let's sneak away and let's watch this guy magically come back to life. Well, as you just saw, he magically came back to life when we walked away and he thought no one was around. The threat is gone. Here he is, perfectly healthy. Went from the cobra stage to playing possum. And now, Dave, he's right in front of us. Yep, and not only is this snake well known for feigning death, let me tell you how it gets its name. The hognose snake has an upturned scale on its snout. And that little hard scale is used to dig into the ground, make burrows, and also to dig up his favorite prey, which is frogs and toads. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the snake a little bit closer to you, give you a better look at that little nose, and then we're gonna let the snake go on his way. So check this out. There he is. As you guys can see, right in the front of that snout, hopefully that's coming in clear. You see that little upturned snout there? Very unique in snake species. That is the hog nose snake. Look at him stick his little tongue out. Pretty cool, huh? Wow, that was a lot of fun. But like pigs in a blanket, it's time to wrap up this episode about our little friend, the hog nose snake. Make sure to subscribe to our channel, click that notification bell for more nature in your face. Man, I'm hungry. BLT? Sounds good to me. Do it. <laughs>